let's get right uh, to Dr. Scott Gottlieb, former FDA commissioner, CNBC contributor. He also serves on the boards of Pfizer and Illumina. Uh, what about the latest uh, thinking or data, or your opinion on, on a, a variant, or this new variant that I, I what, tell us what you know, because I've read things, I don't know what's true and what's not, maybe it's not uh, any more virulent or, or is similar, but what do we know about it, uh, Scott? Yeah, look, there's some critical questions right now that we don't have uh, perfect answers to. It does appear to be—so three questions. It, is it more contagious? It does appear to be more contagious. It's spreading uh, in areas where o the old Omicron version has become prevalent. So Sweden put out data in the last 24 hours that shows that it's increased from 25 percent of infections to about 45 percent of infections over three weeks. So it does appear to be more contagious. Is it more virulent? Is it more dangerous of a strain? It doesn't appear to be the case. The data out of Swedish and the UK, Sweden and the U.K., suggests that it's not any more severe, not causing more severe illness than what we've seen previously. Uh, and, and is the immunity that we've acquired from the current version of Omicron going to be protective against this new variant? That does appear to be the case, just based on looking at the, con the contours of the spike protein in this new variant, this B2 variant. It does appear to have a similar antigenic profile. So hopefully, uh, if people were infected with the current strain of Omicron, which probably half of the U.S. Has, has or will be infected with this current version of Omicron, that immunity that you've acquired is going to be protective against this new variant. If that's the case, and it does appear to be the case, although experimentation is still underway to really nail that, um, nail that diagnosis. But if that's the case, you wouldn't expect this new variant really to take off here in the United States or other countries that have already had their Omicron wave. It could be that if it comes in here and starts to spread at any levels, that you could get a longer tail on the decline in this epidemic. But it's unlikely that this is going to displace Omicron and create a new wave of infection in a way Delta displaced B117 or B117 yeah. displaced the old Wuhan variant. Hey, so, Scott, the, uh, in a similar line of thinking, the, the immunity that you're talking about from people that have had the original Omicron strain, have you seen data, because I've, I've seen anecdotally that the immunity there is pretty good and could be better than uh, people that, that had uh, the full regimen of vaccines? Is, is the natural immunity from Omicron better than that? Yeah, look, it's going to take time to make that determination. I think what we've seen overall is that people who develop an infection with a particular variant have pretty good protection against subsequent reinfection with that variant, and maybe as good, if not better, protection than those who are just vaccinated. But what the vaccines provide is broader and better protection overall against all the variants. So if you had Delta infection, you're probably better protected or as good in terms of the protection you have against subsequent Delta infection as someone who is vaccinated, but you don't have as good protection against Omicron as someone who's vaccinated. So if, in fact, this Omicron variant becomes the dominant variant right now and future mutations happen within this Omicron lineage, which is a distinct possibility, people who had Omicron infection should have pretty good protection against subsequent reinfection against Omicron. And, in fact, this B2 variant is another variant within that Omicron lineage. And what I would expect, if, in fact, B2 is slightly more contagious than sort of your run-of-the-mill Omicron, is that will probably become the prevalent strain of Omicron that we take forward in the future.